Hi everyone, this week I've got a speaker that you may not know. It's a speaker from Frasier. Come right back. All right, well thank you for sticking around. As I mentioned, uh, this is a set of speakers from Frasier. Now this is the Concerto A, but Frasier was a contemporary of Klipsch. Of Paul and Paul Klipsch, Jack Frasier and Paul Klipsch were actually somewhat had a, a, a friendly rivalry, if you will, from what I've read. Not that they told me about this. Um, but they would often compare notes and you know talk to each other and say, yeah, I've tried this, I've tried that, and you know, say what was working and what wasn't. And um, as I understand, they were you know, pretty good friends, um, you know, for quite some time up until I, I assume, uh, Jack Frazier, I think passed away, um, in an accident of some sort. But anyway, uh, he had a, a pretty good run from the 1950s through the, through the eighties. Uh, they manufactured a lot of speakers out of Texas. And so there's probably a predominantly large number of, of you speakers in the Texas region but um, a brand that is sort of under the radar still. If you know the Fraser brand, then you know, you know what to look for, but they're just not nearly as common. The name Fraser doesn't resonate like it does for Klipsch or Dahlquist or uh, ADS, you know, a lot of those other brands that uh, are much more well known. Now, as far as some of the basics here, um, the Concerto, I couldn't find the exact model manufacturing years, but I, I believe that was somewhere around the, the maybe the late 60s, early 70s, all the way through the early 80s. And it's a three-way configuration. It is an 8-ohm speaker, and the, the, the sensitivity that I found was 93 decibels. And I did see that it was $250 a pair. So relatively close to the advent um, as far as pricing, uh, it's 8 ohm and uh, sensitivity. These um, are a little bit more sensitive. They seem like they're even, you know, a lot more sensitive, but, but uh, and also a three way. So that's sort of the basics. Um, I will say that um, one of the things about these, if you're going, if you find them, they're probably a good chance they're in rough shape. They uh, just seem to uh, take a lot of abuse. This pair, I found, I found two pair actually at, one, at the same time. They were in a trailer that was, this trailer was used just for storage and they had been in there for decades. Um, some small little furry creatures uh, found these uh, nice little uh, holes here, these vents and uh, made it their home. And so I had to take them apart and clean them out. But taking them apart is this is probably the easiest speaker that you will find uh, to dismantle. So you take the back plate off, and then the entire uh, internals slides out. It's like a sled. It will slide out, and you have access to all of the drivers uh, very easily. And you can take them out, dismount them, and um, you know tend to them, clean them, uh, whatever you have to do. And then once you reassemble it, you just slide it back in and uh, secure it with a screw in the back, and then. Put the face plate, uh, the, the beer, beer back plate back on, and you're good to go. Of course, the only last step would be to uh, manufacture a grill. These originally came with a foam grill, and I think I have an old picture I'll show you here. Um, like, and like all foam grills, it'll deteriorate and disintegrate over time. So all of them you will find, unless someone has made a new grill, they will have no grill. Um, they actually have uh, originally Velcro uh, tabs on here stapled on, I remove them and then I use magnets uh, to hold on the grills that I make. So uh, a little bit of work and um, you know you can get them back up and running. They're, they're pretty resilient speakers, robust. Um, I don't know that I've ever seen a woofer that was blown. Um, all the mids that I had in mine were fine. I did have one piezo that was um, not working, uh, which is kind of unusual. They're pretty tough. Um, and I was able to procure another one uh, for it and um, same, although I think they're still manufactured, uh, I did find a period correct one for it. And uh, clean the attenuator and you're pretty much good to go. Um, so, you know, that's the Concerto. There are other models that are very popular. There's a, the, they use numbers mostly uh, in their consumer line, I think, that I'm familiar with. They have a 7, there's an 11, 
There's even a, a non-numbered one called the thing. I don't know if it's the thing or thing, uh, but it's a very um, interesting looking speaker. And um, and then there's a very, very large one. It's, a, it's about the size of a refrigerator, and I can't think of the model number at the moment. But um, great, great brand. If you find them, uh, seek them out and uh, check them out and go take a listen if it's uh, something that you're willing to you know, make a grill for or clean them up. If you're willing to tackle that, you'll have a great speaker and typically at a very low entry point. So I'll get these uh, stood back in the system here, reconnected, and uh, put them through their paces. And I'll come back to you here shortly with my thoughts. See you soon. All right, well, thank you for sticking around. I hope you uh, enjoyed the up-close shots. Um, probably enjoyed the ones more so with the grill on. Um, and since we are starting off with looks, um, I think they look pretty good uh, with a grill. Um, certainly not a good look without the grill. And um, if you're gonna have a set, uh, you know, I think you need to make a grill uh, or have someone make it for you. It's not too difficult. Um, without the grill, it, it uh, would have gotten a much lower score, but um, with it, I think it has a bit of a modern MCM type of vibe, and uh, they are, you know, it is a boxier, um, it does have pretty much the same footprint, um, you just sort of need stands for it. If you could put it on a bookshelf uh, in certain positions, certain places, it can be more accommodating, I think, than the Advent. So all in all, I ended up giving it the same score uh, of a 13 on style. Moving on to imaging, they, uh, you know, they, they're pretty cool. They have a, a really nice image that is much wider than the Advents. Um, you know, it's not at the level of an SDA by any means, but it's a much broader soundstage, whereas the Advents, you know, very narrow. These are, um, I would say they, they would fill up about 80% of the space in between the speakers. And it's very good, it's, pretty, it's very airy um, and, it, it, was, it was very pleasant. Again, I always say, you know, a, a broader soundstage is typically gonna be a better experience. And that is certainly the case. Uh, it does have, you know, that um, more separation of the instruments. And for that reason, it gets, you know, an additional point. Um, and and I, I guess I was a little hesitant because I was a little bit surprised that they can do that. I, I didn't expect that. The um, Woofer is behind the baffle, so I kind of expected it to be a little more um, muddling, if you will, uh, but it didn't. It was, um, it, was, it was much better than I expected. Although, again, I've, I've heard these before, so I wasn't a total shock. I do remember how they sounded somewhat. I, I do remember I enjoyed them a lot. 
Um, so anyway, with that, I gave the uh, imaging, I gave it a, a score of 16, you know, for that. Moving on to loads, uh, you know, they, they put out a, a nice uh, low end, not at the level of an Advent. It is a port, a ported enclosure, um, Advent sealed, Advent is more uh, pronounced, you know, more in command, if you will. Um, these don't quite, these don't go as low. They don't, they don't get down there as low as the Advent. Uh, and so, you know, for that, I gave them a 13. I didn't think it was tremendously lacking. I mean, I think they do quite well for their size, but, um, you know, th there is something to expect with a little more cabinet volume. Um, so it, uh, again, pleasant, but not at the level of the Advent. Uh, I think I said I give it a 13. So on to the mids. It uh, does very well on the mids. I, in fact, I wrote great with an exclamation point. Um, voices are out there. They're very distinct. They're very in front of the music. And I found myself wanting um, to play a lot of crooners. Uh, I just felt like that was the, the style I wanted to hear uh, with this set of speakers. And um, it does a fantastic job. The voicing is, you know, in the center and out front. And, um, you know, the music is playing around it. And, and everything I recall, it's, it is one of the uh, standout features of them that I recalled uh, when I, you know, had them in rotation some time ago and do a stellar job at it. I gave them um, a 16 because, I, I, which is the same score of the Advent, um, because I think the Advents do very well in that area as well. Uh, so, you know, it's, it's a thrill to, to listen to them. I think, again, um, I, don't, I, wouldn't, I don't know if it was just my, perhaps my mood, but I just really wanted to hear singers this go around more so. I do have non-music, uh, uh, non-vocal tracks that I listen to, but um, I found myself sort of reaching more for um, crooners more than anything else. Uh, let's see, so I gave them a 16. On to the highs. Um, you know, I again, my expectation wasn't going to be grand. I didn't, I don't, I didn't feel like the piezo was going to be that fantastic, you know. And and I just, you know, I don't, I just didn't have a good uh, impression of what I've read about them. But in this setup and this configuration, it works. Even though there's no, uh, I don't think, I think it runs full. I don't. There's no crossover that goes to it, and uh, it just runs, you know, flat out. But um, it works. It works very well. Uh, however, they've um, set up the mid-range here. I think that blending very much um, worked out. However, they decided to do that. It uh, there's no harshness whatsoever, and I it, it's and it's not irritating at all. Uh, so I, I I measured it the same. I gave it the same rating as the Advent with a 16. Uh, can't I just can't fault it, um, even though it. It looks pretty ugly, but uh, you can't uh, judge sound on looks. So I ended up giving a 16, uh, same as the Advent. Uh, so um, taking a little bit of taking away, a little bit of adding, but ended up being the same score as the Advent. Uh, I think they're a great, fun speaker. Again, I, I think I said it earlier, but uh, probably the Fraser, folks who know Frasier are probably not happy that I'm doing a review that's, you know, hopefully, uh, hopefully others will see. Um, but a little bit of letting the cat out of the bag. Frasier is a brand that for the, for the longest time has really been under the radar and doesn't get a lot of attention. So consequently, um, you can get a lot of bang for your buck here. Now, just like with this set, it, if you can find a set that is, you know, needing some restoration, you can get them pretty cheap and doesn't take a lot of, of energy to restore them, uh, just takes a little bit of determination. This happens to be probably the easiest speaker you'll ever find to work on um, with the way it, it, uh, it slides out and you have access to everything. Um, so a lot of, lot of good things about the, uh, the Concerto. I, I think it's um, a speaker a lot of folks will enjoy if you can find a restored pair. Um, and if you're willing to do the restoration yourself, you know, all the better. Um, I, if you do that, make a set of grills. Obviously, I don't think any, any significant other will let them in the house without the gr a grill. But um, 
get a set, set them up. Um, I think you'll you'll really enjoy them. If you like Advents or you, you've you've heard some Advents, then I think you'll like these too. Just think of the Advent um, or these as a an Advent with a little bit broader soundstage. All right, I think that's pretty much it. Uh, not much more I can say. I've got the um, the Fraser sevens um, and eleven that. Um, I don't have any grills for them yet. They need grills too, by the way. So I've got to get a set of those. I think the next set of speakers that I'll probably do, um, actually I have some JBLs back here that uh, probably do next, but then I also have these rectilinears uh, that I got some time ago that um, I'll probably do as well. So that's it on the speaker front anyway, um, along with some other things. But um, Hope you enjoyed that. Uh, if you've got some, any kind of Frasers, uh, chime in. Love to hear your thoughts. Um, if you want to keep up, subscribe. And want to keep notifications, hit that notification button. And as always, thank you so much for tuning in.